Hey there, are you trying to edit your big commerce footer? In this video, I'm going to show you a couple ways to do just that. Before we get started, my name is Cal and uh, I'm a developer, a store owner just like you, and I also run a private community for store owners called e-commerce growth. And every week I post more videos about e-commerce. So if you find this one helpful, give me a like uh, or what do you what do you do? You subscribe and hit the bell, subscribe and hit the bell, and you'll probably see more just like this, except other topics in e-commerce. All right, let me share my screen and I'm gonna show you guys a couple ways to edit your footer on big commerce. So I have this theme here, it's running just cornerstone. We have super basic footer at the bottom and I'm gonna show you how to edit this. First of all, your footer is, well, Depending on your theme, your footer can be made up of a couple different dynamically populated menu columns. And this one is, right? So it is showing right now the uh, pages menu right here. And this is pulling from storefront, web pages, all this green stuff in here. So shipping returns, contact us, blog shipping returns, contact us, blog. So as you can imagine, if you go into the view web pages menu, you know, you push some things up or down, um, maybe create some things, it's going to affect the footer. Of course, because I also have those pushed into the top navigation, it's probably going to affect my top navigation too. So you kind of have to be careful in doing that. But if it works out that your your bottom category, your bottom uh, web pages structure matches your menu then that's great um, the next column here is showing my categories which matches to my categories up here and again if that's okay to match great if not we're probably going to have to do something different now when i first turned on the cornerstone theme there was another category here for brands uh, i think i don't have any brands loaded so that disappeared dynamically but you may be seeing brands and you may even be seeing a couple other uh a couple other columns that maybe you need to take them out maybe you need to replace them with something and you just don't know where to find them let me show you so in the back end we're going to go to storefront my themes and i'm running the untouched version of cornerstone which you can't edit that so i'm gonna to have to make a copy so let me click make a copy and this is going to take just a minute to duplicate the theme. And then I'm going to apply the theme, make it live, so that I will effectively be running uh, the copy, not the original. And that, that's going to let me edit it, right? So we'll give this just a minute. How are you guys doing? How's your cat? Wish I had a cat. My wife won't let me get one. I know, right? Grown man can't get a cat. The things we learn while watching YouTube. All right, it's done. <laughs> so we're going to click on apply. Uh, I'm going to stick with the light version of this theme. And so now we have the untouched, untouched version here in my archives. And we are currently running the cornerstone copy that I made. So now we can go to advanced and edit theme files. Now, if you're running a different theme, it may be different than this, but Cornerstone is BigCommerce's flagship theme. They put it out there so that all the developers and the theme uh, theme manufacturers or whatever you call those people um, that they have a benchmark. And so as a result, most of the themes out there are going to follow, you know, kind of what Cornerstone does just as good you know, practices. So chances are, even if you're not running this theme, it may still be the same for you. So let's find the footer file. We start out on the home homepage file, which is irrelevant for our task right now. We're looking for the footer. And so we're gonna find that under templates, components, common, footer.html. And when we get in there, we'll see first of all, a big block of code where it's outputting our marketing banner bottom onto the page, hopefully. Uh, so we're going to skip over that. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for this stuff here inside this footer. So we can see that we got a 
title and we got a container here and then we go into some of these this section here and this section has article 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 and if you look inside these articles this one goes through all the pages this one goes through all the categories this one goes through the brands this one outputs our address to the footer and uh, this one goes in shows the payment icons now I haven't put in an address so let me just go ahead and do that so you guys can see that show up that's going to be under store setup store profile and I'm going to say one two three main street um where should where should i say that i'm from i'm gonna say portland oregon because i'm not very inventive today um let's see here so phone is optional i'm gonna put in just a fake phone number click save if i go back to my front end and refresh then I think it's going to show, yep, it's showing right here. But, you know, on every site I ever see, I always see the, like, the address and whatnot on the far left, right? Not in the middle of the footer, for goodness sake. So let's change that. Let's go into the footer.html, and let's find the article where we had our address, which is right here, address, phone number, etc. And I'm going to take everything here in this clump, this whole if statement and I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and I can either delete this or I could hit uh, what is this command slash or I think it's control slash on a PC to just comment it out and I'm going to go up to the top here right before this first article and I'm going to create a space I'm going to paste in this and I'm going to click save and so what we effectively are doing is just reordering these to put the address column first. And I'll take a second here. This has been recorded live, so you guys are waiting while I'm waiting. And theme editor can take a couple seconds local development which i'll show you guys on a future video is more techy but it is so much faster all right so if i go back to the front end and refresh you can see we successfully moved our our info column to the first spot now you know i like that it's put my address here i like that it's put my phone number my fake phone number but maybe i don't want this stuff in the navigate to perfectly resemble my dynamic menu. So let's edit that next. So we go back into the footer.html file, and here's where we put our address. And this very next article is the one that has the pages loop in it, right? Say we want to take out this sitemap, for example. We could comment that out. And I would recommend commenting stuff out by default instead of just deleting it because you may want to come back and find your link to the sitemap, you know? So comment it out and you can save it for later like a snack. Um, now, this right here is our pages loop. So this code says that for each of the pages in the menu system, create a list item with, their, with its name and URL. So this is how the dynamic... Um, links work and so if you don't want this to be dynamic what we're going to do is we're going to just paste in a list item and i just pasted in the the sitemap one we're going to take out the sitemap guts we're going to take out the href value and we're going to take out all these curly brackets that pulls in the sitemap name so that we have just like an empty sitemap like this and i'm going to create a couple of those and I'm going to say, I'm going to go into each one of these and say, this is called link one. This next one is called link two. Third one. I think we're going to go with link three. This one is going to be link five. <laughs> all right. And, uh, you know, just to save some time, I'm going to just point all of these 
to the same href value, which is slash categories. Clearly, if we're hard coding this, we can point it to whatever URL you want, but it's late and I want to show you guys how to do this. So we also need to take out the pages dynamic menu. And so I'm going to highlight this whole section. And again, just going to comment it out. Um, I will go back here and delete things sometimes if commenting it doesn't effectively take out everything, but I always try and comment as much as possible. And commenting, if you're not familiar with it, just means that you're taking active code and saying it's a comment instead of active code, which effectively deactivates it. And that's what you guys were seeing me do with that command slash command. All right, so I'm saving this. Gonna go back to the front end. Sometimes when you click refresh, it can take you know a couple seconds uh, to apply the new theme change. But you can see when I did that, uh, we have all of our links one through five uh, missing the four right here. Now, what if we wanted to change this navigate link? Well, let's go back into that same spot. Now, right here, it's saying that within this H3 that's associated with these links, that it's going to call the lang file and look for something called footer.navigate. Let me show you guys how to find that. Up here in the lang file, in the lang folder, there are all these different language variables. You may have all these, you may have less, you may have more. Um, most of the time people are using the English version on their site. So I'm gonna show you guys where to find this in the English version. And the reason that this lang file is useful because maybe you want to have a couple different languages on your file. Maybe you want to have English, French, and Spanish. Well, having that same variable be located in each of those language files means you could have the Spanish version for navigate in there or the French version of navigate. And you could pull it up depending on what language people are on. If we want to just hard code over this, like if we want to just say, you know, just say browse instead of whatever this language variable is, that's fine, but it's going to say browse no matter what language people have selected. So um, it's up to you which way you want to go. You can create new language variables in here if you want, but if you create a new one, then you got to create in all of the other languages that you're going to use as well. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to show you both methods um, to find this right here. We're going to go to the English uh, JSON file. So en.json, and I'm going to just do a search because there's so much stuff in here. I'm going to do a search for footer. And you can see that it showed showing one of two, so that it found footer twice on here. And if I cycle through it, it's actually like this one right here, this one right here. So to find this variable, which says footer.navigate, it's going to be footer, and then look in the sub items for navigate. And so when you say uh, lang footer dot navigate, it's saying actually just get this right here. So what you could do is just change this to say browse and apply just like that. I'm going to take a good 10, 20 seconds for Big Commerce's theme editor to save. But then when we come in on the front end and click refresh, it changed it to browse just like that. So that's kind of how the language variables work. But again, you could just hard code over it like that. And if you do that, you're going to want to take this language variable out so that it's not showing it twice. I did that in the right section. I did not do that in the right section. So I'm going to com command Z and come back here and go to the right section. How embarrassing. I recorded that. All right. So there's my new browse title. Now, if we want to do the same thing with categories, we certainly can. We can create hard-coded list items, replace this right here with that, or maybe you want to leave the categories dynamic. It's up to you. And, you know, that's basically how you edit the footer. And I do want to show you one more way before you go, which is that if you're looking at this and you're going, this is kind of complicated, you know, and it's great if I figure this out once, or it's great if I have a developer do this for me, but how am I going to remember to do this again? 
don't worry, there is a better way. And the better way is called regions. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to copy uh, something in here. So instead of having this categories, dynamic menu, and instead of hard coding these, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to take this whole unordered list and I'm going to comment the whole thing out and I'm going to paste this region in here and I'm going to call it footer underline categories dash dash global. All right. And what this does is this puts a new region into your footer, uh, which is like a, a, a blank hole, if you will, for a widget to be used. So I'm going to just save that and then we're going to look and see what the heck that means. If you're unfamiliar with the page builder, page builder is BigCommerce's drag and drop utility where you can take widgets that are installed in your store and drag them into regions wherever those regions exist. And so that is saved. Let's go into storefront, my themes, and then customize to see the page builder slash customizer, whatever you want to call this thing. Now we come in on the design tab by default, you can click on preview which takes away all of the uh, widgets from your view, but also makes all the links clickable. So you'll, you'll usually toggle between those. And you can see this region up here at the top. We're not using that one. We're scrolling down to the bottom where you can see the global region that I put in inside the categories um, column. And I could easily have put a, a region in these other two columns as well and had all these be powered by regions. But, you know, just to show you the power of this, you know, I could take an image widget now and upload it there. And you can see that I have an image there, which, you know, it's kind of cool if you're trying to put a widget there or if you're trying to put an image there. I'm going to come down here to. Well, let me show you this thing first. Let me just save and exit out of this because I actually have an app installed on here. This is an app that. Um, that I built, that my company built rather, and I'm going to show it to you because it has a widget that I think you guys are going to need, and this uh, is in the free version of it, so you don't even have to pay for this. If I go to apps, you'll see that I have an app installed called Epic Page Builder Widgets, and this is available in the App Store. Just look up Epic and you'll see Page Builder Widgets. And when you get it loaded, there's all these additional widget types that you can turn on. And when you turn these on, they'll show up in your customizer. So the one that we're going to look at today is called custom menu, but there's a whole bunch in here. All these over here are free. These ones are um, a one-time payment to get access to all these. So they're still pretty cheap. Let's go to storefront, my themes, customize. All right. So there's all, there's this whole bucket here of the basic widgets that come and you could, you know, use the HTML widget to like really get Cody and, and code like a, you know, a, an unordered list and, and put all your classes and everything in there. But a much easier way is to scroll down here to the widgets that I installed here and look for custom menu, custom menu right here and drag that in there. And you can see this is already looking pretty good. We have three links in here. Uh, they are just generic links. So let's change this to be link one. And this is where you'd put a link, uh, put the actual HTML that it's pointing to. And let's call this link two. And this is where you would put that HTML link. Let's call this link four just to be fun. Now you can see that it doesn't match the styling of this and that's because our widget can't possibly know what your styling is. Um, but what we can do is we can set that styling. So what we can do is come up here to the three dots and go to settings. And there's some settings in here, including turning this into a horizontal menu, which doesn't make sense in this context. But if you're using this for a horizontal menu, like at the top, that's a game changer. Let's come in here and let's uh, decrease the size of these maybe. Maybe around 14 is where they should be. You can change the size on different uh, device sizes like this. You can see, so it gives you a little bit extra control. I think we need to unbold these to make it. It's looking, it's looking pretty good now, actually. Um, we can 
uh, do text decorations if we want. We can change the text color to something lighter if we want. Um, so you can get it to exactly what you want. And looks like maybe we need to reduce the spacing a little bit. So let's try this. Bad. Decreased margin and decrease. There we go. Probably needs to be a little bit more. Actually, maybe, maybe not. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty close. So, yeah, I mean, you can see that you can dynamically create this. And the nice thing is, once you put your page builder regions in and you have all your columns and your footer created using these widgets. You know, this is not going to be very hard for you guys to come in here, you know, three months from now when you want to change your your footer, um, your footer links and just click into that. Sorry, click into that and then maybe add two more links just like that. All right. So this is uh, this has been a couple different ways to edit your footer. I showed you guys how to hard code it. I uh, explained to you guys, you know, what these dynamic menus are and how they are working in there. So you may be able to get the right content in your footer without even coding anything. Uh, but chances are you may have to hard code some links or you may want to consider doing the page builder regions to make it really, really easy to change. And, and um, yeah, it's up to you. I wanted to show you guys all the different ways I could think of off the top of my head to edit these. And you can obviously go a lot farther with custom code, but I showed you guys where to get to it. So go hog wild. If you found this helpful, click the like button for me. And uh, if you guys are interested in joining our community, you can do that at, uh, let's see, join the community, uh, join <laughs> what, what is my URL? Good Lord. Join ecommercegrowth.com. If you guys need a developer for your store, hit me up at epicdesignlabs.com. And, um, you know, I'm always looking for ways to help you guys out. I've done this for 11 years. I love building million dollar stores. I hope that you're the next one. So if you're stuck on something, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're stuck on. And maybe that'll be my next video. Thank you guys so much for watching this. And uh, I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.